Root is one of my favorite games of all time, and chances are, if you're watching this, that it's probably one of yours too. And routinely since its release, we've gotten these expansions that provide two new hyper asymmetric factions, as well as some other sort of bonus content. And the reason why we're all here today is we now have the Marauder expansion, which introduces two wild and very interesting factions that greatly benefit the overall ecosystem of Root, while also introducing Hirelings, which is the single biggest disruption to the game since its release. Let's see how it plays out. Rats. Vermin have infested the woodlands, and Lord of the Hundreds is the tyrannical but charismatic ruler of the swarm. Seeking to form little hegemonies in clearings, rats are a powerful militant faction that increase in strength as they acquire craft and ruin location items. While they have some flexibility with their general units, their strength comes from their leader, a unique piece that heads the conquest like a wave crashing across the board. But ruling such a dogmatic flock has made the Lord fickle, and his mood changes at the beginning of each turn, where the player must pick a different special ability based on the items they have yet to acquire, meaning that as his strength increases, so too does his obsession and his abilities themselves become more rigid. Opposite the rats are the ancient badger lords, the stout keepers in iron. Another military faction, they are pilgrims returning to root to reclaim their lost artifacts distributed among the forests at the beginning of the game. A bit like the Eerie, their actions are limited based on cards allocated to different actions, but unlike their bird brethren, they aren't penalized for not making full use of them. Instead, to reclaim artifacts, they must establish depots, excavate the artifacts, and return them to the associated depots for processing, often losing the committed card in the process if not enough badgers have dominated the surrounding clearings. But their precious artifacts are vulnerable too. Other players score extra points for destroying their tokens in transit, which makes it a good thing that the hardy badgers ignore the first unit loss in any battle. So the keepers are all about creating a defensive supply network to claim the artifacts they need. Both of these factions are exactly what I love about Root. They're clever, interesting, they have competing strategies that aren't just simply beat up one another, and they present interesting challenges based off of what other factions are in play. And speaking of which, that's an important thing about this expansion. Marauder, more than any other expansion before it, stabilizes the lower player count games of Root. Don't get me wrong, both new factions can hang in bigger games, but each being military Militant factions contribute a huge amount of reach, Root's internal system for determining what is needed to make a stable game. Meaning that like the Duchy, Irie, and Marquise before them, either of these new factions can really stabilize a board, allowing for a much greater variety of matchups, especially in lower player count games. Which brings me to what, to me, is the most interesting thing about this whole shebang, the Hirelings. Hirelings are newly introduced with Marauder and have three simultaneously released supplemental packs that in total offer denizens of each of the playable factions plus a couple unique creatures new to the game. When playing with them, three hirelings that are not from any of the factions present in the game are drawn and start unaffiliated with any player, essentially out of play. The first person to reach 4, 8, or 12 points selects a yet unclaimed hireling, rolls the hireling die to determine the length of their contract, then gets their benefit of control. The catch is, when the contract runs out, you must give control of the hireling to another player of your choice, who then rolls a die and does the same. But Root loves an underdog, and the player with the most points only counts yellow pips on the dice for length of contract, whereas everyone else counts both. In higher player counts, most or even all of the hirelings are going to be on their demoted side, meaning they're not as powerful and for the most part don't have any pieces on the board and instead just give you some sort of passive ability, like the Rabbit Scouts who give you the Woodland Alliance's higher defensive role, or the Feline Physicians that effectively give you the Marquise's Field Hospital abilities, or the Badger Bodyguards that let you ignore the first hit that's dealt to you in combat. But 
in lower player count games, these guys are on their promoted side, meaning they become full-fledged participants in the forests of Root. The promoted versions of the hirelings generally have units set up on the board and offer actions to their controller that happen immediately at the start of birdsong or optionally once during daylight. Instead of bunny scouts, they are the spring uprising, setting up and initiating revolutions in clearings, or a full complement of marchable bird mercenaries, or flat out obstacles like the implacable and oh so damn cool looking furious protector who moves to a clearing, smites a unit of each faction and declares to the world, none shall pass. I love these hirelings. Not only do they introduce a really elegant catch-up mechanic, but also they present so many interesting tactical challenges and opportunities. One of the most interesting things about them is that you know that their alliance to you is temporary and you'll at least for a little bit have to give them up. So when you're positioning them around the board, not only are you thinking about how you're positioning them for your own direct advantage, but also thinking about the double-edged sword when you have to give them up and what your opponent can potentially do with the placements that you've made. I cannot understate how much better this makes the two-player game of Root. Before, I would almost never play two players without using one of the Clockwork Expansion automated boards, and for some people, that's a lot to manage. I like the Clockwork Expansion, and it's a lot for me to manage, but the hirelings make the two-player game more dynamic, thematic, and balanced. Root is a game of multi-layered power struggles among these denizens, and in a two-player game with the hirelings, the world feels more vibrant and well-realized. And like you have some competing priorities and challenges and the duration of control does a nice job preventing players from snowballing. That said, they do add an additional layer of complexity, but not so much that I find it intrusive. Root isn't a simple game to begin with, so I think it's an in for a penny, in for a pound situation. And I should note that officially, these don't alter the reach amount for a given game. These aren't going to magically make Lizard v Corvid matchups make sense, but I have played played two-player games with slightly under the recommended 17 reach that feel totally viable. So where do I stand, or sit rather? Well, as a dedicated rooter who over the last couple of years, for reasons I have had a harder time getting together larger groups to play, I love this expansion. Now, I still wouldn't recommend Root as a dedicated two-player game. If you were only going to play this two players, then there's just too much of a barrier to entry and a lot of unused content to get all the way to this state in the game. But if you like Root already and you want to add two really killer new factions, a spicy layer of exchanging tactical capabilities, as well as making the two-player game itself all that much more viable, then Marauder is definitely the way to go. And that's our review. But I want to hear from you. What are your favorite root factions? Have you played Marauder? What do you think of the new ones? And what about Hirelings? How did they actually impact your games? And do you think there are other expansions like this that completely change the viability of the player count for an existing game? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being awesome. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.